Okay. Does anyone want to comment off the bat on what you saw there? It's a really beautiful piece, I think, and real, actually um, has a lot of ideas in a very uh, short amount of time. Anybody to begin? Kira. Hi, Michael. Um, I just have one very quick question. I wonder whether you can talk a little bit about the relationship between the text and the backdrop, the city backdrop, the walking through the city, which city is it? Why did you record images from that city? How does it relate to the text? And so on. It is all, almost entirely accidental. I had the images from uh, some previous video work I mean, I, I understood them to read, that way, to read that way. Some statement about reality and relationship to unreal, reality TV, which is unreal. But of course, it itself is a video. I mean, it is itself is a video of your body. It is itself a video of your city. And so I wonder if you can reflect upon the fact that you're making some comment about the importance of real experience and your real life you know, in video on YouTube. And, and again, we're sort of also technologically having this conversation about it perhaps not like reality TV, but also not like reality. Yeah, we're, we're still, the little piece that I did doesn't really explore this, but we know in the background it said, uh, you're still the editor, I still made selective choices of what to see, um, uh, and we're still, I'm presenting myself in the uh, virtual hyper-reality of the internet, uh, and it's, it's not so much that one is Would anyone like to respond to that or ask a different question? Yeah, just a comment. The text, all the shows, as I know, I think I know 99% of those shows that you listed on your text. I just want to say that I can't believe how much reality TV become part of my life. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's not real, but because it's become part of my life, it's almost like real to me. It seems to me like she was saying that even the reality television isn't real, because it's incorporated into her life and very important facet of your life, it becomes real in the sense that it's, it's, it's like the street you walk on. Yeah. It's like the skyline of your life. Yes, yeah, and for uh, people, uh, people begin to imitate the uh, styles of, of, of the self that we see on reality. It's not necessarily the only 
I, I watch these shows and I recognize them, and, uh, but I don't watch them and say, okay, that's what it's like to be a chef or that's what it's like to be a housewife. Um, I, I watch them sort of against maybe their intention, watch them almost as farce, uh, watch them as uh, reminders of just how ridiculous our world is. Although, of course, part of their visual language and narrative structure is farcical and Absolutely. ironic, so that they're already asking for that reading mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And, and I think uh, it's often lost on the academic community uh, commentator that uh, the audience knows often that this is a farce, that uh, e e the, e even the, the uh, young teenagers and uh, uh, the unsophisticated viewer isn't accepting the storyline as uh, unproduced actual representation. You know, we have a very sophisticated audience today compared to 30, 40 years ago. Uh, much more media aware, media alert audience, largely uh, often because of the internet, because they're able to dig into the background of all of that. So I think the academic skeptic shares a skepticism with the with the audience about the unreality of reality TV. And, and uh, others have said that uh, part of the pleasure we get pleasure from watching these uh, farcical shows because uh, just the same way we get pleasure from reading the world weekly news. We, the pleasure comes from detecting the farce, detecting the unreality, and then the audience is able to place themselves above the spectacle and say, I have unwrapped the spectacle, I have uh, revealed the secret of the spectacle, I know it's a spectacle, the spectacle has a tool. So it, it works on it works on quite a number of levels. I think that's why mass media is mass, even though there's only a few million people watching some of these shows. They're masked because they work on many different levels for many parts of the audience. I'm, I'm sure you've, you've encountered that before. But it seems to me that you are you are producing some kind of um, uh, evaluative system between the unreality of television and perhaps the closer to reality of YouTube, where real human beings get to speak straight to a camera, get to hold the camera themselves, show you where they live, and that, that if there's any kind of um, um, contest going on, it's between what we watch on mainstream television and what we watch on YouTube, which is itself becoming a form of mainstream television, and that it is sort of, quote unquote, more real than reality television. There is that in the ontology. Well, I think we're going to need to end there because we try and keep our conversations at 10 minutes so that they're legible on YouTube. I, we greatly appreciate your participation in the show, and I, I think it's a, a wonderful piece. So thank you so much for Skyping in. Bye-bye. <laughs>